introduce you to three types of mentoring. There's the informal mentoring, which is also really the traditional form of mentoring, when the relationship just tends to happen. And we know that mentoring is extremely important for leaders' development. And when you think about organizations, who do we see at the top still in higher percentages? Men. Men. Uh, and it tends to be white men. And so organizations say, wow, mentoring is really great. But if we only have this informal mentoring that tends to happen, guess what? We tend to be attracted to people that are like us, right? It's just a natural um, law of attraction. So savvy organizations and savvy people say, wow, if mentoring is really effective, I want to open this up and make sure that it's more inclusive and it's available for more people. So I'm not just going to depend on the informal mentoring, the relationships to just happen. And hence we have what's called whoops, planned or formal mentoring. Uh, how many of you are with organizations or have been with organizations that have had planned formal mentoring programs? That's awesome. And in that instance, they provide some kind of a venue uh, for that <coughs> matching to take place to, again, open up mentoring to more people. Uh, and the last two types of mentoring, one is called kaleidoscope mentoring. And just like a kaleidoscope, when you look into that cylinder, uh, and then you can see a whole variety of colors, right? And if you just gently turn the cylinder, the lenses will produce more colors and different formations. And it's a great analogy for kaleidoscope mentoring, which means you don't look for one person to be the mentor, the be-all for you. But you think about some of your questions and concerns. Maybe you're thinking about leaving your company and going to another company. So you may want to find and seek out somebody that can give you advice about how they did that journey, how they transferred their skills and interests from one organization to another organization. Maybe you're also thinking about going back to school and know that that's going to be, you know, a juggling act, right? So you may want to seek out somebody that has, has already done that. So again, kaleidoscope mentoring. It starts with you understanding where you are, what your needs are, what kind of information, support, and advice you'd like. And then again, um, use your network uh, to find out, you know, who could provide some, some mentoring to me. The last kind of mentoring is self-mentoring. And my premise is to be the leader of you. And to, again, do your own mentoring. So what does this mean for self-mentoring? It's to ask yourself some questions. Where am I now? Where do I see myself going? What gives me passion? What's my ideal self? When I'm at my best, what does that look like? And so then calibrate it against what's going on in your current life. These are your aspirations. This is where I am now. But how can I get where it is that I want to be? Again, and who are the people? Who are the resources? What are the experiences that I can try before making some, some critical decisions? And bottom line, it's taking the initiative. My mantra is, nobody cares as much about your career as you. I'm not suggesting there aren't a lot of people, hence mentoring, that are ready to share their advice, their experiences, their insights. But if you take a wait and see, case sera, sera, whatever will be, will be approach, whatever will be, may be, and you may not like what it ends up being, right? And as an executive coach, I work with many, many people that um, sort of get themselves into a rut, and they want to get out of that rut, to be the leader of themselves.